Let me pull up this story from TimCast.com. Matt Gates votes Trump for House Speaker. And not just that, he stood up and nominated him. And it was the greatest thing. Look, Trump's not going to win. But they C-SPAN actually added Trump's name to the vote tally. And it's like one vote from Matt Gates. What was funny about this is not just that, is that he's sitting next to Marjorie Taylor Greene when he's, when he's announcing this vote. And she's voting for McCarthy. But back to what you were saying, Trump having been retired. My first question before we get into what Trump is up to would Trump at this point, based on what you said, would Trump be, if he could be, would he be a good speaker? I don't think Trump has any interest in being the speaker. Well, no, but hold on. I know. I know. That my, my question is, would we even want him to be? I would take him, but is he a, a better candidate than someone like uh, Steve Scalise, who's like a compromise candidate? I don't know, because Trump gives the establishment everything that they want. He's not the independent. When he said drain the swamp, he didn't do it. When he said build the wall, he didn't do it. So why would we even want him at this point? He's not anti-establishment. He's establishment. He's pro-McCarthy. He's pro-McCarthy. He if, he, if he did get in, how much you want to bet? He'd be like, okay, Kevin, what should I do? Yeah, he has. I don't. He probably doesn't even know what the Speaker of the House is supposed to do at this point. Does he have any idea what the Speaker of the House does? I think uh, I'd have to ask didn't, him. I didn't don't. Bannon say Trump should be Speaker as well? At this point, so. look, man, a few months ago, I was like, oh, DeSantis, maybe Trump. Now I'm like, DeSantis very heavy because Trump seems to be just out of the game. Like by choice, like he's, he's like, I'm chilling, dude, leave me alone. That brings me to an interesting question. In the Republican debates, you're going to see retired Trump, not like strong 2015 Trump, but like retired Trump. You saw his, uh, his speech announcing his run. He looked pretty tired. DeSantis, who you could watch his uh, debate when, for governor, he choked pretty hard. Like he didn't do so well in those debates. He's a little dry. He's a little dry. DeSantis is a dry, in, in those, in, you know. Not in, so charismatic. And then it's a fact. Ye is going to be in those debates. <laughs> Ye is going to be in those debates. And Bring it on. How, th how, do you think it's really possible? Ye, I, I believe how, is how going it is. To run. I mean, he the, pulls. The, the debates are, are controlled by a, a bureaucratic uh, force of Democrats and Republicans that kick out anyone from the third party. They only make sure that their swamp candidates are pretty much in there. How would who, I, who I don't, is, I don't who, see who Ye doing they? this? Who is they? Who is they, they only have who, <laughs> the establishment Democrat and Republicans that that run the um, presidential debate committee, which is a private organization that pretty much is there to kick anyone else out that isn't a part of the swamp. Okay, my, I'm my, sorry I interrupted you. That my, was a cheer No, you're okay. You're Ye okay. is one of the most charismatic people in human history. Like him or not, disagree with him or not, he's one of the most charismatic people in human history. I know that he's been talking to Ali Alexander, who's maybe the smartest political strategist uh, in the country. So. The most charismatic guy with the smartest political strategist in a debate with retired Trump, uh, you know, not so strong DeSantis in a debate, and then the rest of the whatever establishment candidates they roll out, Pompeo. You might see something very surprising in those debates. I don't Pompeo, think Pompeo, Nikki shout Haley. Out, I got to shout out Shane Cashman again because he also wrote the Yay article and got to sit down with Yay. People need to get this. When Yay got up and left, Shane Cashman, he's a huge fan of Kanye West as an artist and, and knows a lot about his life and career. And Shane went up to Ye and started talking to him. And I, here's my opinion on what happened, because I don't want to speak for Shane or Ye. But I think Ye immediately recognized that Shane actually knew what he was talking about. Shane was referencing things about Ye's career that he could see in what was happening now. One of the things he mentioned was that Ye has this arc of bombing with negative press and then rising up really big, even bigger. And he and and there's an element of maybe Ye is trying to do nuclear bad press as part of some kind of strategy or something. But Shane talks to Ye. Ye immediately goes, "Come with us, fly out." And so we we you know Shane didn't go, but if, but a few days later we're like, "Bro, like go talk to these guys." And then he decided he was going to go do it. He got to actually sit down with Ye. It's a really, really interesting article. You need to understand Ye's strategy because we sit here and we and we laugh about the absurdity of his Alex Jones interview. But if this guy has continually found a way to, you know, dive and then, re, re, you know, and then come back like a phoenix. Yeah. The, like, I think I think you'd be a fool to underestimate a guy who was able to make himself a billionaire, whether it be Trump or Ye. They made fun of. Look, I, I, I don't know. I think that Alex Jones interview was nuts. Don't get me wrong. But everybody made fun of Trump. And I think, you know, one of the things Ye said to me was that Trump opened the door and showed us how. So I wonder if he's actually doing something. I'm not saying he's going to win, but I'm saying when it comes to the debates, I, I, I lean towards agreeing with you. I don't, I don't know. It's a tough call. 
But he's a charismatic, powerful guy. I think he could find his way in. I think your man Shane Cashman hit on something because I'm a Jew. When I first watched the Alex Jones interview with Ye and he was um, saying positive things about the Nazis, I, I really didn't like it. I'm not going to lie. Like, I did not enjoy it. But then I listened more and he was saying, I love everybody. I love the doctor that killed my mother. Uh, I love Mao Zedong. He was trying to preach Christian values, which is that uh, he loves everyone. That's what Ian was saying. Yeah, he was saying the same thing. He was he did, it was brute. The way he did it was brute force. So it came off, you know, with these little clips that taken out of context, make him look like a psycho. But that's what happens bro, when you're bro. radically honest. Well, hold on. To be fair, in context, it made him look like a psycho. But not if you listen to the whole interview, because what you're saying, Andrew, is accurate. He, he started to talk about all the villains of history and how he has love for these people, even people that have wronged him personally. I haven't heard the Mao stuff. I, I did hear him just focus on that one leader in Germany in 1930, <laughs> to be honest with you. Did he say Mao? Yeah, he said Mao, too. Okay. I mean, it's a three-hour interview. It's easy not to see yeah. the whole this thing. Is some, so Shane released a clip where he brings this up to Ye, and I think you should listen to it and judge for yourself. But he says, it's interesting how you say you like a bad person, or really like someone, one of the worst, and that is the only thing said. But when you mention that you love other people, you love the Jews, you love other groups, no one wants to hear that portion of it. And so it's almost like, I, I guess the idea is kind of like Ye was intentionally seeing how you would react when he presented you with a positive and a negative, and then you only care about the negative thing he said, not the positive it thing. It weeds out, oh, what were you gonna say? Yeah, it weeds people out that are like short-sighted, I find, but it also puts you at a disadvantage emotionally for a while after you do it, because it angers a lot of people. But you do see the fools. The comedian Owen Benjamin, uh, I did a debate with him a couple of years ago, and we were debating about Jews, and he said that, you know, Jews are like a sacred cow. You're not allowed to discuss whether they're good or they're bad. And and I told him, I don't want to be a sacred cow. I don't want my people to be a sacred cow. Let's discuss the good and the black in the community. Otherwise, you're stultifying the community. It's the only way to move things forward. Like nobody, nobody says, how dare you discuss if there is crime in the black community? Because you look at the statistics. OK, there's an issue. How do we address it? If you look at my community... There is way more disproportionate uh, of my people involved in things like the negative corporate media, banking. Uh, I, I'm not trying to sound anti-Semitic. I've been accused of that somehow. It's very crazy. But it's, it's easy to look at my community and say there's these problems. And if you don't let people discuss it, it makes people very hateful. So I don't want there to be any sacred cows. And I think one of the things Ye was doing is saying, okay, this is a sacred cow. I'm not allowed to say that I love the Nazis. Well, I love everyone. I have Christian values. I love everyone. And he's slaughtering a negative sacred cow, which is you, Hitler is supposed to be so much worse than Mao. Mao killed way more people. Yeah, Mao killed true. way more people. What was it, like 50 million? Or Something like that. that. Yeah. yeah. The starvation. Stalin that occurred. killed more people. The, and people yeah. are allowed to wear communist uh, logos on their shirts. Right. That stuff's evil, too. Here's my thing about this. We, You know, I think in the 30 minutes that we had with Ye, like we mentioned the Jon Stewart thing. Jon Stewart said exactly what you did, that... If there are people who are seeing a lot of Jewish people in certain sectors, finance or, or media or whatever, and anytime they try and bring that up, they're, they're attacked, then it's going to actually make things worse. Yep. And I agree with that. My issue is, look, before we went live, Ye was calm and we talked about all of that. I said, you know, look, but what about Elon Musk, Jeff, uh, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates? And he was like, yeah, well, you know, they work for Jewish people, don't they? And blah, blah, blah. And it was very chill. But then when we go live, all of a sudden he was very angry, high energy, like saying that I was disrespect, like I'm going to get a PJ if I'm getting lectured like Lex Fridman. And it was like all of a sudden this calm conversation we had had transformed into something that fe felt totally fake. And then he gets out of here and a couple hours later, he got a private jet already waiting for him at the airport, which I just don't see as being particularly likely. I, so I, I don't feel like it was an honest interaction, to be honest. All, all I'll say to that is that... Um one of the, the wisest Sadiqs, a righteous named Rav Ashlag said is that all you can really choose in life is who you surround yourself with. And at the time that he did the interview with you, he had like Milo in his corner. And I don't have very many nice things to say about Milo. Okay, I, I'm not a fan. And Milo is not with you anymore. And Ali Alexander is. And I have a lot of good things to say about Ali Alexander. I've known him for years. And he's a positive force. You can listen to him. He espouses Christian values and lives it more than just about anybody. And though I'm a Jew, if this country doesn't return to God, this country will fall. Look at Europe. Europe is, they always say Europe is like 10 years ahead of us or England's 10 years ahead of us. 
England is falling into the garbage because those people are largely atheist. And if America doesn't return to being Christian, because it's not going to be a Jewish nation, it's not going to be a Muslim nation, if this doesn't become a Christian nation again, this country's not going to stand. It's your, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt, man. What, what was the next thing you're going to say? It's just that Ye actually uh, puts out Christian energy. Like you listen to Jesus is King, that had spiritual energy. Mm-hmm. His album, Jesus is King, was incredible. It returned people to Christ and to God. He needs, he needs to hang out with Shane Cashman. <laughs> I love Shane Cashman, bro. His well, article's incredible. Yeah, his, his, his and, and really, we, we mean it. And I think Shane understands Kanye's career and understands the Christ-like stuff and I think would be a positive influence to get away from that weird stuff that he did on Alex Jones. Something you know I, mean? I was learning while, from what happened when he was on the show and the whole Jewish conversation around Kanye and everything was... Uh, that a lot of the people that call themselves Jewish don't believe in God. At that point, I'm like, I don't, I question that you're even a Jew at that point. Like you might be an Israelite because you are derived from Jacob, Jacob's tribe. Jacob is Israel. Judah, his son spawned the Jewish people, but they, it was the God that was, but, but but if not for God, they would not exist. So like, I just got to say, it's a semantic argument. Jewish religion, Israelite by culture. That's what I'm proposing. But you're, you're just you're just making a semantic argument. You're I don't not, think so because people call themselves cultural Jews. I get it. You're from the tribe of Judah, but you're really you're also from the tribe of Israel. Like you are an Israelite. There are Jews uh, in Israel that say what's happening in America is like a second Holocaust because there's so many Jews that are becoming atheist, and because they don't uh, care about anything about the Torah, they're willing to intermarry to the point where their their descendants are not going to be Jewish. So they say it's like a, a second Holocaust because these people eventually, you could say that, uh, you could call it now that they're not Jewish now, but if, if they're atheist and they intermarry and eventually their kids will not be Jewish. So that is the diminishment of the tribe in the way in which Ian is describing it. But I, I will say that the problem with the, the atheist Jews in this country is the same problem with any other atheist. If you are disconnecting from God, you're not going to have truth in your life at some point. You can do great things in this world, but if you're not connected to God, at some point you're going to fall. I love Scott Adams. I think Scott Adams is one of the most incredible commentators of our lifetimes, like how he explained Trump to people. But at a certain point, it's like his commentary went a little askew, and I believe if he were connected to God, that would never have happened. I, I don't mean the Bogart that might go ahead. I, no, no, I, I wanted to say it's, it's believing in something bigger than yourself and whatever that means. I see what, what I see a lot of people is like, I don't care if you're an atheist. I care if you hold yourself above all others. And so what we end up getting... There's, there's a couple different ways to look at atheism that we've seen. There have been moderate secular people who are good people, who are moral people, who don't want to infringe on anybody, don't think they're better than you. They just don't believe in God. But now we're seeing a lot of young people who are atheists and think that's carte blanche to be narcissists, to be egotists, to be entitled, or to just inherently have those traits within them because they don't think <coughs> there's anything else. They're like, well, there's no God. It's only me then I'm the only thing that matters. Everything is mine. Totally. I think part of why the Jews were so successful as a, as a, as a culture and, and as religion and as a faith and as a people is because they followed the tenets of God. Like, you don't covet your neighbor's wife. You don't steal people's stuff. You don't murder people. You don't worship false idols. Like, you don't money, all this crap. Like, the usury thing is where I start to wonder. These people, like, fell away from the path and then started provoking and, and and using the other people as slaves. Like usury was punishable by death for a long time. It, it, insane amounts of interest. I, I, I think the family unit is also something worth talking about since, of course, a lot of religious Jewish people spend their entire Friday night and Saturday night together. That's awesome. Uh, th- that, that is, that is a, a superpower th- that is helping people connect with their their loved ones with with their own you know with their own people and and i think that that truly is one of the more important tenets especially when it comes to the larger statistics to strong family units to to a lot of success i'll tell you a personal story i don't think i've told this anywhere but uh, when the don't tase me bro thing happened my parents were counseling me hey don't get expelled from the university don't go like i could have gone on every tv show in the world and my parents wanted me to be low-key, don't get expelled from the university, don't go to trial with these bogus criminal trials. And I, I wanted to go on every show. I wanted to go on Bill O'Reilly and confront him for being such a war pig. I wanted to go on Jon Stewart and say, how dare you call me a douchebag? You're a sellout. I wanted to do all these things, but a voice came to me. It was like, honor your mother and your father. They really did not want me to go high key with it. And if I did, I know I would have become an egotistical monster. I never would have become a more refined man 
And so what you were saying about the the value in uh, actually believing in Torah or like the Jewish tradition connecting to God, without that, I'd, I'd be lost. And I wasn't even someone that was so uh, heavy believing in God. It's just something that, that, that occurred to me. So I just feel like if you look at world history, Christianity did so much good in the world. It wiped out human sacrifice and cannibalism off this continent. So if you're not, if you have a nation totally disconnected from God, what does that look like? Thanks for watching this clip from the Timcast IRL podcast. Hang out with us live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. and become a member over at Timcast.com for uncensored members-only shows exclusive. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.